Welcome to this lightning fast overview of contracts. Starting with the fact that contracts are everywhere. You've already been a party to many contracts for employments, services, rentals, leases, and so on. It's important to read and understand the contract. If you don't know why, take a look at Once Upon a Time and see what happens to people who contract with Rumpelstiltskin. Let's go through the basic elements of a contract. The most critical element that actually defines a contract is offer and acceptance. When somebody, a contract is formed when someone offers to sell something or provide a service for a specific price under specific terms and the other side agrees and accepts it. A key behind this is the meeting of the minds. Are both sides actually talking about the same thing and intending to enter into an agreement about it? If someone is selling ice, meaning frozen water, and the other person thinks they're buying ice, meaning diamonds, you don't have a contract. The parties to a contract must be competent, at least 18 years old, not in prison, not mentally incompetent, and when dealing with a business contract, it means the persons must be lawfully authorized by the company to bind them to a contract. Contracts need certainty of subject matter. What is being contracted for must be clearly defined. And in some contracts, dates certain are an element of the contract that is enforceable. If you uh, contract to purchase a custom wedding cake and it arrives a month too late for the big day, the contract has probably been violated or you should have made sure that dates certain were considered an element of that contract. Consideration is another effective uh, element that is so fundamental to a contract that it effectively defines a contract. A contract is an exchange of items of value. Uh, those items of value are called consideration. They can be money, goods, services, time, or advice, but each side gives and gets something of value. Another element of a contract, of course, is that both parties must have been acting in good faith. If one was selling the Brooklyn Bridge and didn't own it, there's fraud rather than good faith and the contract is void. Contracts also cannot violate public policy. You can't contract for illegal things. If you uh, buy drugs and somebody just delivers you baby powder instead, you can't go to course at court and enforce your contract. Some important additional contract components include assignment and delegation. Does the contract say whether either or both parties can assign their benefits or delegate their obligations to other parties? That is, can you turn the contract over to someone else or subcontract? Non-competition clauses. Does one party agree not to work for a competitor or not to start a competing business after their contract ends? This is very important in hiring contra in employment contracts. Um, and third party beneficiaries. Is the point of the contract to benefit the people in the contract or is a third party supposed to be the beneficiary as is often the case, for example, between agreements between parents for the benefit of a child? Contracts are private law between the parties. Since they are private law, they can be terminated or amended by whatever terms the parties agree to. So any contract you draft or when you're reading a contract, look for the provisions regarding termination of the contract. Is a handshake as good as a signed written contract? Well, the answer is sort of. Legally, yes, but it creates difficulties. Written contracts are only required by law in certain specific circumstances, including contracts that can't be completed in less than a year, contracts regarding ownership of real estate, contracts for the sale of goods under the Uniform Commercial Code, and contracts to take on someone else's debt. And then there are some statutes that require things to be in writing, like a transfer of, of copyright to someone else must be in writing under the U.S. Copyright Act. Enforcement is where an oral contract, that is a verbal agreement with, a, with or without a handshake, 
um, develops issues and, and difficulties. The problem arises as to how you are going to enforce that oral contract if something goes awry. So the proof would be your testimony of what was agreed to together with evidence about any of the acts under the contract that were carried out. Contract enforcement is by civil lawsuit of the parties to the contract. And to be enforceable, the first side required to have act must have acted. Something has to have happened before you can enforce. Contracts are not enforced by police or government agencies, but rather by the parties themselves who either work out an agreement through negotiation or mediation or go to court in an enforcement lawsuit. Remember that any contracts you're involved in should include provisions setting out which state's laws apply and any provisions for mediation or other attempts to resolve a dispute before it goes to court. And lastly, contracts are often negotiable. Uh, a contract that is offered to you is often an invitation to have a dialogue about what the agreement will be. Um, other times, however, it's definitely a take it or leave it contract and you get a contract in the mail from a credit card company, you can't call them up and negotiate the terms. Um, if that's the case, make sure you fully understand the contract and are willing to accept its terms before you sign. Usually, there's no harm in at least asking questions about the terms, especially in something personal like a lease or an employment contract.